Ready for another deep dive? Absolutely. Today, we're heading to post-World War II Italy. Sounds fascinating. It is. We'll be exploring this book, The Swallows of Lunetto. Okay. And the life of a young woman named uh, Alexandra Bianchi. Alexandra Bianchi. Yeah. And she's dealing with love, loss, the aftermath of war, you know, all that good stuff. Right. Oh, and there's a mysterious stranger thrown in for good measure. <laughs> Always love a good mystery. Who doesn't? So he just shows up in her life and, well, I don't want to give too much away. Let's just say he piqued my interest right from the start. Mine too. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, maybe we should set the scene a bit. Definitely. The author does a fantastic job with this, by the way. The setting is almost like a character itself. Oh, I love when authors do that. Don't you? <laughs> the story unfolds in this small coastal village in Calabria called Lunetto. Calabria, okay. It's the late 1940s, so you can just feel the weight of history, the rawness of post-war recovery. Yeah, you can practically feel feel the atmosphere seeping from the pages. Exactly. And and there's this strong emphasis on family and tradition in this tight-knit community. It makes you wonder how Alexandra fits into all of this. What's her story? So Alexandra is really a study in contrasts. You know, she's described as tough working in the shipyard. Shipyards? Wow, that's not an easy job for anyone, let alone a woman back then. Exactly. And it's a job steeped in family legacy, which adds another layer to it all. But here's the thing. Alexandra also has this incredibly artistic side. Oh, interesting. So it's like she has this hidden depth to her. Totally. Her drawings, they're not just a hobby, you know, they're like her escape, her way of processing the world around her, which was pretty complicated in post-war Italy, to say the least. I can imagine. So her art, it's almost like the secret window into her soul. You could say that, yes. It's definitely a form of silent expression in the midst of all this chaos and change. And speaking of chaos, I think it's time we brought in that mysterious stranger, don't you? All right, let's talk about the stranger. He seems to appear out of thin air, masked, weighed down by his experiences. Hmm, the masked stranger. What's the deal with the mask? What do you make of that? Well, it's certainly an attention grabber. Makes you wonder what he's hiding, right? Right. And it's not just a physical hiding either. At least that's my take. It's symbolic, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. like he's trying to conceal his identity, his past, maybe even from himself a little. Exactly. A shield from judgment, perhaps? Yeah. Or maybe even regret. Ooh, I like where you're going with that. And their first encounter in the middle of this bustling marketplace. It's not exactly a romantic setting, is it? Not at all. It's like their connection, it's forged in the everyday chaos of life in Lunetto. It's a striking contrast. So we have the ordinariness of the marketplace against this extraordinary connection. I like it. And don't forget their individual experiences of war. We haven't even touched on that yet. Oh, you're right. That shared history, the loss, the resilience, it's bound to play a major role in their story. It's the foundation, really. But we'll delve deeper into that in a bit. So where were we? Oh, yeah, the masked stranger. I'm dying to know more about him. Well, as their connection grows, we finally learn his name. Leonardo. Leonardo. OK, it's fitting somehow. And those scars he's hiding, they tell a story. A story of war. We knew it had to be something like that. But it's more than just physical scars, isn't it? Uh, no, no, it goes much deeper. You see, Leonardo was in the Italian army during World War II. Okay, so he's carrying some serious baggage. Oh, absolutely. And it gets even more uh, complicated. The book reveals he was involved with the fascist regime. Wow. That adds a whole other layer to everything. To grapple with war trauma is one thing, but to carry the weight of being on the wrong side of history, that's heavy stuff. How does Alexandra handle this revelation? It's not like fascism just disappeared after the war, especially in the South. Right. It was, and still is, a sensitive topic. And the author doesn't shy away from that. We see Alexandra wrestle with this new information about Leonardo. I mean, she doesn't excuse his past, but she sees his humanity, you know. There's this really powerful scene where she opens up about her own family's experience with war. Her father was never the same after World War I. Oh, wow. So both Leonardo and Alexandra's father carry these deep wounds from war, but in very different ways. It's tragic. It really is. And this shared understanding of loss and resilience, it draws them closer together, even as it creates conflict. It makes you think about the ripple effect of war, how it touches so many lives, across generations even. Exactly. And you can tell that Leonardo is desperate for refuge, not just from the consequences of his actions, but from the guilt and the shame that eat away at him. Which is why he flees to Palma, right? Precisely. Mm -hmm. Palma represents this fresh start, a chance to escape the weight of his past. And what about Alexandra? Why does she follow him? 
I think she sees a part of her father in Leonardo's torment. She recognizes that pain. Mm -hmm. And maybe she feels a sense of, I don't know, maybe empathy. She's drawn to his vulnerability. So she's not looking for a fairy tale romance. She's choosing to dive headfirst into the complexity of it all. Absolutely. She's drawn to the rawness of his experience, flaws and all. Wow. Talk about a leap of faith. And it's in Palma that they try to build a life together. But it's never that easy, is it? To outrun the past, I mean. It rarely is. Yeah. Especially when your past is so closely tied to national trauma and moral reckoning. Their attempt to escape just highlights how inescapable those experiences really are. So true. But they are trying to build a new life together. Do they find any measure of peace in Palma, or at least a semblance of happiness? And what about Alexandra's art? Is she still drawing? Oh, she never stopped drawing. In fact, her art takes on a new dimension in Palma. It becomes even more introspective, wouldn't you say? I'd like to think so. I mean, think about all she's seen, all she's carrying with her. The author even mentions this one drawing, it's unfinished, of a woman. And it's just sitting there in the text, almost like a metaphor for their own incomplete journey. It's like that saying, art imitates life. Their lives are far from a finished product, just like that drawing. What happens next? Does their past and Lunetto follow them to Palma? It almost feels inevitable, doesn't it? Like, no matter how far you run, the past eventually catches up. It's like a law of nature or something. Yeah. And the author really knows how to build suspense here. Oh, I bet. What happens? Spill the tea. Well, there are these hints about, you know, a possible threat to Leonardo. It's like this unspoken danger that just lingers. Ooh, that's ominous. I knew there had to be more to his past. But how does Alexander deal with this? It must be terrifying. It's a lot for her to handle. But then there's this incredibly powerful moment, a turning point in the story, really. Alexandra confronts Leonardo. About time. What does she say? She basically forces him to face his demons, to really confront the weight of his actions. It's not about letting him off easy. She challenges him to find a path to, uh, what's the word? Gimption. Yeah, redemption, atonement, something like that. It's easy to condemn from a distance, but Alexandra's right there with him, pushing him to be better. I love that about her character. But how can he even begin to atone for actions like that? It's not like saying sorry is enough. Exactly. It's messy, complicated, and the book doesn't offer any easy answers, which I appreciate. Realistic, right? Definitely. But... There is this one character who offers a glimmer of hope, I think. Alexandra's mother. Oh, I love a good mother figure. What does she do? She steps in, providing this grounded wisdom. She talks about the importance of family, forgiveness, mm -hmm. even in the face of, well, everything they've been through. It's a good reminder that even in the darkest of times, love and forgiveness have this incredible power to heal. Totally. And then, just when you think things can't get any more intense, Alexandra finds out she's pregnant. Whoa. A baby. Now that's a plot twist. What a symbol of hope, though, right? Right. New life, new beginnings. Talk about resilience. So they're going to be parents, facing all of this with a child on the way. What happens to their little family? Well, they end up moving to Rome. A fresh start. Rome. Wow. That seems fitting somehow. The eternal city rebuilding themselves. It's almost poetic. Do they find happiness in Rome? Do they ever truly escape the shadows of the past? The book doesn't really give us a definitive answer, but we do see Alexandra. She's still drawing. There's this one image that really stuck with me. She sketches Leonardo's masked face. The mask again, full circle, but this time it's captured in her art. Exactly. It's like she's facing it head on and maybe, just maybe, helping Leonardo do the same. What a powerful ending to a powerful story. It really makes you think, doesn't it? <laughs> About the weight of our choices, the possibility of redemption and how even in the face of unimaginable hardship, the human spirit can find ways to heal, to hope, and to love. The Swallows of Lunetto, everyone. Go check it out and let us know what you think. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep those deep dives going.